Uh, welcome back to this C programming and assembly language course. In the last module, we discussed in reasonable detail the various instructions from the 8086 architecture that are relevant to C programming. We discussed a few examples and uh, hopefully the assignments would have reinforced many of those concepts. So now we move on to module 2 which essentially deals with the C programming and inline assembly. So, uh, primarily we are going to deal with C programs inline assembly. So, what is inline assembly? Uh, inline assembly is nothing but a simple way of moving from a C program to assembly language and then coming back to a C program. So, essentially it is a way in which you can intersperse assembly instructions in between a high level C like program. Uh, by the way, before I proceed here, I have to mention uh, that like I said in my introductory class that I assume that the viewers and the students of this course are already familiar with C programming and I am not going to go into any detail not even as much detail as I did for the assembly language of 8086. Uh, uh, I am not going to go into any such detail of the C programming syntax or the functionality or you know any, any such thing. I am going to primarily deal only with inline assembly language examples and thereby reinforce some of the C programming concepts. So, you can always go back and refer uh, Kernighan and Ritchie in case you are in doubt of any of the C syntax or the C functionalities. So, uh, what are we going to do in module 2? So, we will uh, primarily deal with C programming inline assembly then uh, so we will talk about some of the data types and their sizes you know just to make sure that we tie it well with our uh, discussion on the microprocessors that we had in module 1. Then we will look at some very specific examples. So, this module will be primarily run based on some examples, but the examples have been carefully chosen to drive home a certain concept which can be modified later or will become much clearer as we go on with the course. So, uh, we will look at some ALU operations, string length operation, you know string length function, uh, multiplication, then we look at swapping of two functions of two variables in a function in some detail. So, there are various ways in which you can do it in C. So, we will look at how you can actually do this better with assembly language, how would you do this if you were to do it using a function instead of you know swapping variables within uh, you know within that scope. Uh, so, these are some uh, nitty gritties and some details that get driven home when we discuss these particular examples, we will come to it a little later. So, uh, first of all uh, before I proceed into concrete examples, let me also state that there are different kinds of compilers, there is a GCC compiler, there is a Turbo C compiler, there is a Microsoft Visual C compiler and so on. There are many compilers for C and C++. So, which one do I pick? So, uh, I have picked, uh, technically it should not matter which one you pick because they are all uh, ultimately they all implement the same functionality. But I have picked a compiler which essentially allows this inline assembly coding most easily, right. So, uh, to do inline assembly programming, you need to follow a certain syntax. Certain compilers like GCC, the syntax is pretty complex and uh, is not uh, worth it for us because you do not want to get stuck in the syntax of these uh, operations rather than actually understanding the concept. So, therefore, I have picked the MSVC compiler, right? This is the Microsoft Visual C compiler. C or C++ compiler, does not matter. So, let us quickly get into you know what inline assembly is all about. So, let us assume that we have this function. Uh, 
void main int x equals 2 and I am going to do uh, you know x is equal to x plus 4 printf slash n person d comma x. So, let us assume that I want to translate this particular instruction alone into assembly. I want to do only this instruction in assembly. I want to leave the rest of the syntax as it is, which means that the rest of my function has to be interpreted as a C program, which means I can follow the syntax of C programming there. Only certain key instructions which I want to speed up, I want to move to assembly language. So, it turns out that that is very much possible and in Microsoft Visual C or Visual C++, that is achieved simply by putting this directive called underscore underscore ASM and in flower bracket, you go ahead and write any assembly instructions. So, you can put in any assembly instructions here. Now, the beauty is that the variable names x, y and z, you know whatever we have as variables can continue to be used inside this assembly directive uh, flower braces that we have put and we can also use all the registers and other uh, assembly instructions as it is from the assembly instruction set that we have. So, let us look at a very concrete example first, right. So, let us assume that I want to do this x equal to x plus 2 operation in assembly, okay. So, what do you do? You first have to load this x into so, I will write underscore underscore ASM bracket open, right. The instruction I want to do in comments, I am going to put it here is x plus 2. So, what do you do? You just say move EAX comma x. Now, what this x is in terms of microprocessor data and microprocessor registers, we will look at later. Let us not worry about it now. For now, assume that x is a variable and is accessible inside this inline assembly uh, portion as well. So, then what do I do? I do add eax, 0x, 0, 0, 0, 2. Of course, this has only now, so what it was, what is it done? It has simply moved EAX, the register, it has got the value x here, it has done EAX, EAX plus 2. This value has not yet got replaced into x, therefore, I need to execute another instruction which is move x comma or rather small x, EAX. So, this executes the instruction where x will eventually get the value eax. So, now if I go ahead and do my printf person d comma x, what gets printed here is uh, of course, it depends on what x was initialized to. So, uh, x was initialized to 2 here, right. So, therefore, this will simply print 4 for you here. So, notice how we simply translated only this instruction x equal to x plus 2 into a particular assembly block. This is known as inline so what we are going to do in this module is to reinforce the 
assembly language instructions that we learnt in module 1 through inline assembly C programming. So that way we sort of cover some concepts of C as well as reinforce the instruction set that we learnt in module 1. So with uh, regard to that, let us look at our first example, write an assembly program to evaluate the following expressions, right. So let us assume all variables are 32 bit integers. So that brings us to an inter interesting discussion saying what are the typical data types that we will use in C. So typically these, uh, remember that the logical memory map allows us to deal with multiples of bytes. So obviously the smallest um, unit that we can deal with is going to be a byte of data. So therefore byte of, so this is what is known as a character. C H A R in C. Now you could also deal with a word of data. Depending on you know whether you are uh, dealing with uh, an older processor or new processor or with what kind of compiler, this could either be a short integer or an integer itself. Now we could also deal with a D word of data, again depending on the compiler this could be a long int or it could be an integer. So the main point is that because the registers and the logical address mapping is going to deal with multiples of bytes or words or D words, the data types in C are also mapped to similar sizes and that is what we see in all our compilers uh, you know across various kinds of uh, you know processors. So here in this example let us assume that all variables are 32 bit integers and we want to perform the operation x into y plus a minus b and load it into EAX register. We want to do x, x or y or a and b and load it into the ebx register, okay. So uh, let us start off by you know writing our inline assembly, let us void main. Going forward I may not always write this void main. So let us assume that int x equals 2 y equals 3, uh, a equals 4, b equals 5. And what is the operation that we want to perform? E a x should get loaded with x into y plus a minus b. So let us go ahead and do this thing in assembly language underscore underscore asm. So what do we do? We first load x into EAX. Remember that when we want to do multiplication, EAX is an implicit register and because this is a 32 bit integer that we are talking about, we have to deal with EAX and not just AX. So therefore move EAX comma. Uh, I will just call it x. Then I am going to do a mul y. So what has this instruction done for us? It is simply loaded eax with the value x. What has this operation done? It has loaded E D X and E A X together the 30, uh, 64 bit number as X into 
y. Now I go ahead and add. Remember that now E A X has has my answer there, right? So I go ahead and add A to it. Uh, sorry. Add E A X comma A and finally I subtract. E A X comma B. So, of course, this particular program will work only if the higher E D X happens to be 0, right. So, it is an interesting exercise, I leave it to you to figure out how to modify this if uh, you know E D X also happens to be a non 0 number because of the multiplication. So, uh, what are we doing here? E A X is simply now x into y plus a right and e a x eventually is x into y plus a minus b. So, I can close this bracket and this concludes our arithmetic operation that we wanted to do x into y plus a minus b and we are loading the result eventually just in E A x, we are not interested in getting this to any other variable. So, now let us look at the uh, logical operation, we wanted to implement E b x equals x x or y or a and b. Remember all these are bitwise operations. So, therefore, I again go ahead open my underscore underscore ASM block, I load E B X with X, then I XOR E B X with Y, then I have to now because as a bracket I have to do the uh, A and B very carefully. I move E C X with A, then I do an AND of E C X with B and then I do an OR of E B X comma E C X. So, this operation is E B X will get X, this operation is E B X is X X or Y, this operation is E C X gets A, this is E C X is A and B bitwise and the final operation is E B X equals X X or Y or A and B. So, I can close this and of course, I eventually do a, I can close my C function as well out here. So, there are two blocks that we have introduced into the C programming uh, uh, syntax to just illustrate the concept of inline assembly. This is one inline inline code one. So, with that now let us move on to uh, another interesting example which is you know where we are going to reinforce the concept of jump instructions and loops in assembly language. We want to write an assembly program to evaluate the expression z equal to x into y using repeated addition ok. So, what do we want to perform? We want to perform z equals 
x into y using repeated okay so let's assume that uh, x and y uh, are 16 bit short integers right so we go ahead x equals 2, y equals 3 and um, let us say int z equals 0 and of course, the intended operation is z equals x times y. This is just one statement in C programming, but we want to now break this down into a repeated addition operation. How would you do this in assembly? Just to drive home the point of doing a branching and looping operation in assembly language. So, this is the instruction that I want to convert. So, therefore, I will now introduce my underscore underscore ASM block here. So, repeated addition is just adding x y times, right? So, what do you do? You first have to clear some register where we are going to add this any number of times. So, therefore, I do x or e a x comma e a x, right. So, this is e a x equals 0. Irrespective of what e a x was, the value of uh, at the end of this XOR operation is just 0. So, I am clearing the register and I am going to move E C X with Y. Right, this is uh, my counter. I am going to add X that many times in, with my eventual res, uh, register. So, what I do is I start adding now e a x right comma x. After this I need to decrement e c x because I have now added it once I need to decrement e c x. Remember that on decrementing e c x the 0 flag may or may not be set. So, you need to do this operation of decrementing or add, adding x to itself as many times as y the value of e c x does not go to 0. So, therefore, here you have to do a jump on no 0 to this address here. So, let us call this address. Uh, Maybe I will write it in a different color to indicate that this is a label or an address. So, I am going to jump to this label called mult. So, here what are we doing? We are simply loading the counter. ECX is which is nothing but Y. Okay. Then add e a x with x, right. I am adding x equals or plus x and this is e c x becomes e c x minus 1. And as long as it is not 0, you keep adding this x to itself. So, when the for example, y is 3 here. So, after 3 counts, y will come down to 0 and that is the condition when the 
instruction instead of looping all the way back to mult will actually proceed which means when it hits 0, the 0 flag will be set and therefore jump on no 0 will not be satisfied and the instruction will proceed to the next step and where I am ready to load my final answer into z. So therefore here move z comma a x. So when you come here z will be x into y. So again I, I finish my inline assembly block and if you want you can do a printf here of person d which is z value and you will see that the answer is 6. So here we have illustrated apart from all the ALU operations, we have also shown how you can exploit the jump on no zero operation to loop back to a particular address depending on a particular condition. So in the next uh, lecture, we will look at some more examples of uh, string length and so on to reinforce certain other um, assembly instructions that we studied in module 1.